Nairi and I broke up on a Thursday. It was pouring with rain. It's just the winter, Nairi. You always get depressed in the winter. I'm not depressed, Jessie. I just don't think we should be with each other anymore. She was my first proper girlfriend, so splitting up was always going to be rough. We broke up on a Thursday. My older brother picked me up. He handed me a bottle of whiskey as I wiped my tears and snot all over his car seat. Don't worry about it, mate, he said. If there's one thing I know about, it's how to get over a woman. <laughs> Although my brother Jono is a successful businessman, a loving husband and father of two, most of his advice tends to involve undercover ninja missions, water pistols and optional nudity. <laughs> When an ex-girlfriend of mine had been unfaithful, he'd been quite full of suggestions. Do you want me to go and shit in her bed? <laughs> what? You know, shit in her bed. Put a little Pepe Le Pew between the sheets. <laughs> what are you, like 12 years old? <laughs> oh, she'll be sorry she ever messed with you. <laughs> yeah, no thanks, Jono. <laughs> oh, do you at least want me to slash her tyres? <laughs> I think I'll just get drunk and have casual sex like a normal person. <laughs> Your choice, don't say I didn't try and help you. <laughs> Understandably, I was sceptical of his relationship advice, but this time it sounded quite sensible. He claimed nature was the answer. I, I ran out of pr printer paper and I had to pull some kids' artwork off our wall at the office and <laughs> print it on them. He claimed nature was the answer. You just need to reconnect with nature, Jess. Get out of the city and the smog and the rain and reconnect with your roots. Given that it was his only advice that didn't involve defecating or breaking the law, I was pretty keen to support it. Me and the missus are taking the kids snowboarding tomorrow. Why don't you phone up your boss and tell her you're taking a mental health day? Nairi and I broke up on a Thursday night. On Friday afternoon, I broke my pelvis. The day had started out perfectly. I carved my way through six inches of fresh powder, free from the shackles of society, relationships, and the city that we once shared. Now I was with the only woman I needed, Mother Nature. The sun seemed to bathe me in her light, and a Shakespearean voice inside my head repeated, Oh, if she could see me now! My smooth movements seemed to say, look at me, I am single but satisfied. I'm a woman of the earth and all that it represents. <laughs> Apparently Mother Nature wanted to be with me about as much as Nairi did. <laughs> I hit a mound of ice, went flying in the air and came crunching down on my right hip. By the time the ski rescue people removed me from the mountain, I was hypothermic, pumped full of morphine and totally delusional. Now, it's important to mention at this point that I hadn't always lived in Wellington. I grew up in a number of small New Zealand towns, but I was born in a little place called Wanganui. Wanganui is one of those hideous little locations that's too big to have character, but too small to be considered a valid destination. Wanganui doesn't have a lot going for it, but it does have a hospital, which is where I was born and had not since returned. When the paramedic informed me, in my post-breakup, morphine-induced state, that they would be taking me to Wanganui Hospital for examination, the coincidence was a little bit much for me to handle. This is the circle of life. <laughs> I was born in Wanganui and now I shall return there to die. <laughs> That'll show you, Nairi, I thought. She's going to feel pretty bad at my funeral when everybody knows I died single and heartbroken in the shittiest hospital in New Zealand. <laughs> Admittedly, it was kind of perfect. Hold on, love, said the paramedic. I know you're in a lot of pain, but I'm pretty sure it's not life-threatening. What would this healthcare professional know? It's the circle of life, man. Don't you get it? How's the pain, love, she said. How do you think I'm dying? <laughs> she silenced me by letting me, me self-administer the laughing gas. <laughs> Just suck it slowly, love. <laughs> oh, that's what she said. <laughs> I laughed and laughed and sucked a little more. 
On Sunday, I was deemed stable, ironically. My brother, his wife and kids had to return to Wellington to get on with their lives. I was moved to a regular ward, single and alone, except for the three old ladies who were now my roommates. I was told I would be staying for at least six days. My new companions had all recently had their hips replaced. <laughs> Apparently, that's how they organise things in Wanganui. Not by age or by priority, but simply by body part injured. <laughs> ward two, heads. Ward three, arms. Ward four, hip problems. Now don't get me wrong, I love old ladies. I think they're great. But the problem with being the only person under 70 in a ward full of wheelchair junkies is that they assume because you're still sporting all your original teeth, your pain can't be half as bad as theirs. Oh, could you fill up my water glass, dear? Oh, I don't want to bother the nurse. I wish I could reach my glasses. For the most part, I just pretended to be asleep. But on Tuesday, I kind of lost my cool. The lady in the bed next to me asked me to help her find her crossword book. Look, lady, I can't help you, okay? My hip is just as fucked up as yours is. <laughs> on Wednesday, Nairi called. I had asked my brother Jono to phone ahead and let her know that I'd probably be dying soon. <laughs> to be honest, I was expecting some fanfare, flowers, chocolate, maybe even a sympathy marriage proposal that I could then turn down. After all, she was living the good life and I was stuck in Wanganui Bardo with three bossy grandmas and morphine-induced nausea. The nurse handed me the phone and I did my best to become invisible to the ladies of hip replacement row. But given that phone calls happened in Ward 4 about as often as cartwheels did, my chances of privacy were non-existent. The TV was turned off and the hearing aids got turned up just in time for me to get all... The hearing aids got turned up just in time for me to get all choked up and stutter. I don't know. I just... It hurts so bad. And I just really love you. <laughs> Wanganui only has two TV channels. And my drama was much more interesting than either of those. The Ward 4 rumour mill began to work overtime. Oh, had a fight with her boyfriend, I think. I think the ski accident was just a ruse. It was actually the S word. Oh. They all started to treat me like a complete nutcase. <laughs> Nodding slowly and smiling knowingly every time the doctor visited. On Thursday, I lost my call again. Look, it wasn't suicide, okay, you guys? I'm just not a very good snowboarder. Whatever you say, dear. <laughs> On Sunday, I was released under the strict condition that I would not work, drink, or have sex for at least four weeks. I returned to Wellington, to my brother Jono's house, to complete the remainder of my sentence under house arrest. It was less than ideal. The only upside to being single was the opportunity to take to the city and rediscover my inner bachelorette, drunk, single, and loose. In reality, I was living in, in, as my brother's overaged stepchild, completely sober, disabled, and not an ounce of rebound action, even from my physical therapist. <laughs> At least now, I had roommates who weren't already retired. My six-year-old niece was a regular visitor. She would come in to bolster my spirits with her, general with her generous observances about the world. If you're sleeping here, where does Auntie Nairi sleep now? I burst into tears. <laughs> and Olivia promptly left. I couldn't decide which was worse. Pelvis purgatory. Oh, doesn't like those P sounds, does it? Pelvis purgatory or Wanganui. But before I could even begin to contemplate the S word, Jono came in to provide me some more of his complimentary life coach services. <laughs> it's all right, Jess, he said. Plenty more fish in the sea. I don't want another fish, Jono. You lesbians are always thinking about fish. <laughs> Jono! <laughs> Look, do you want me to take you to a titty bar? <laughs> what? You know, a strip club. Jono, don't be ridiculous. True, you couldn't even get a lap dance anyway with your hip the way it is. <laughs> are you mental? Look, 
All I'm saying is, is that this experience is really going to make you appreciate the pleasures in life. Are you still talking about lap dancers? <laughs> sort of. It's a metaphor. <laughs> a week later, my niece Olivia returned. Are you ever going to jump on the trampoline with me again? I'm sorry, Olivia, I do have a broken pelvis. Well, could you just lie on it and I'll jump around? <laughs> what could I say? I was supposed to be getting some fresh air. I lay on the black plastic trampoline. The spring sun had baked it warm. Olivia bounced ever so gently around me and instructed me on the best ways to see faces in the clouds. I started crying again. <laughs> Olivia stopped bouncing. You know, she said, rather matter-of-factly, people that cry all the time don't get to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> I wiped my eyes. <laughs> I apologised. <laughs> Sorry, Livy. It's okay, she said. You know, when I feel sick, I like to eat ice cream and watch Mary Poppins. Maybe you should just buy us some ice cream. It's only a little walk. <laughs> All right then, bossy pants, I said, but I get to pick the flavour. 